Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Angela. Do you ever wonder what are you going to do with that scrap wood that you have laying around either from other DIYs, home improvement projects, something your partner or significant other was using, whatever the case may be, what are you going to do with those little scraps? Today, I'm gonna to show you a few little projects you can create using that scrap wood. Let's get started. All right, guys, in the garage, in the shadow, I, this is just a bucket of scrap wood that we have. We have two, and then we have another one over there. And I'm just gonna take a bunch of random pieces, see what I can find, and we're gonna come up with some projects to make with scrap wood that I have. So first thing I'm going to do is take all of these longer strips of wood and I want to cut them down to be roughly the same width. Um, some of them are not all the same because some were already pretty thin to begin with and I didn't need to cut those down. I just wanted them to be roughly the same width so that nothing was like really sticking out on the piece we're going to make and you'll see why here in a minute. Once I have all of those cut to the width I want, I guess that would it, what it would be, the width, the thickness, I don't know, <laughs> whatever you wanna say it is. Um, but then I'm just gonna take all of my long strips and cut those down with using a miter saw. And I didn't measure anything here. I wanted all of my strips to be different sizes because we're gonna kinda like build a scrap wood art piece if you will so it's going to be like a frame you'll see what i'm talking about sorry my arm is in the way here i didn't realize it until after i viewed the footage and i didn't have any more pieces to cut down at that point but you can still get the idea and i know some of these machines can be intimidating to some people but they really aren't that bad if you just use all of your safety precautions and know how to use the machine it can be a lot of fun and you can make some awesome projects so next I'm just taking all of my scrap pieces that I cut down to size and we're just gonna play around with how they fit together. So we're basically just building a puzzle here of wood scraps. And I was trying not to have to like cut any of them, um, how I initially cut them down to all be the same thickness. I didn't want to have to do that, but I just didn't have enough wood to make this work. So that's why I had to do that part. And then I did want to cut them down to be like shorter, longer here and there. Um, I have like three or four different types of wood here. So I think this just turned out really awesome. This is my favorite project in today's video and I hope you guys like it too. I know not everyone has scrap wood just laying around, but this was definitely a lot of fun to make. Now that I have all of my pieces laid out how I want them, I took some various stain shades. So I think I used like four different stains. I have espresso, I have a sun bleached, um, I have a whitewash. That might be it for the stains. I do have early American sitting there, but I didn't like the way that one ended up looking on the tones of what I had here. So then I also took my antique Waverly wax and then I also have a Valspar like antiquing glaze and I used both of those. I also left a lot of wood pieces bare because I just love the contrast of like the darks and the light tones and I like I said I love the way this turned out. This is my favorite project today. So I'm just going to go through after I stained everything where I wanted I did let this all sit for 24 hours before moving on to my next step. I also only stained the tops of all of my wood pieces. I didn't think it was necessary to do anything else. You're only going to see the top and I wasn't sure if that would, if I did the sides, if it would prevent the wood glue from really holding on to these pieces the way that it should. I also realized there were some little gaps here and there um, in my wood and I had these little square dowel rods in a variety pack from Walmart and they, the smallest square size dowel in there just happened to be the perfect size to fit into some of these 
areas so I just cut those down where I needed to and like look how perfect that fits like it was just a sign it was meant to be but I just took my wood glue and glued that piece toward the front because I didn't want it sitting back I wanted it to be like flush with like the front of my sign and that worked out just fine so now I have all of my layout and I'm just taking my wood glue and I'm gluing all of my pieces together so I started row by row and I just glued everything exactly where I had it laying. Um, I did have to like move this apart because I, at first I didn't have my silicone mat down and I didn't want my wood glue to start sticking to my contact paper on my desk. So I had to put it all on the floor and then bring it back up and I just took like one piece of wood at a time onto the ground and then bringing it back up onto my table and I felt like I kind of messed up my arrangement a little bit but it still works out in the end. I would highly recommend using one of these silicone mats though that way this wood glue isn't going to just like stick to the surface you're putting it on and like rip it up along with it because you are going to have some of this glue seep out the back. And I just have a baby wipe there to wipe up any excess glue that's seeping out on the front. I had wanted to hold this all together when I was finished with um, one of my like long clamps, but unfortunately they were at my mom's house and I didn't have one. So I didn't clamp this together with anything and it still held together just fine. And once I had this all glued together, again, I let it sit for another 24 hours before moving on to the next step. So next I wanted to cut this down to make it all straight on the two sides where we have pieces that are just kind of random. I'm using, I don't even know what kind of saw this is, I forget, it's my husband's newest toy though. And um, I wanted to get a straight line and this was the easiest way to do that. However, this saw just kept like getting stuck on me and it wouldn't go any further than like five inches down the side of my piece and it did that on both sides and I don't know I don't know what the issue was I don't know why it would just keep stopping and I didn't want to force it and end up ruining anything so I did have to take this over to the saw I used initially and I just kind of had to like I don't know do it freehand and hope that it came out straight which it didn't it wasn't perfectly straight I, I had it a little off because I didn't have a guide to like hold it up against because all of these pieces were different sizes. So anyways, after that, I, I got it as straight as I possibly could. And here you can see it's kind of just like getting stuck and not going anywhere. So I gave up on, on this so I didn't want to ruin anything and I didn't want to hurt myself. So then I got it as straight as I could and I figure I'll take some more of my scrap thin pieces and we'll just create a border to cover up. You can kind of see how like part of it juts out and then it's, it's just very wonky. So this frame just covers that all up, makes it look a little more finished. So it was a happy accident. And I just wood glued these um, frame pieces together as well. And then I clamped, I flipped my piece over, clamped it down to my table, and then took some very small brad nails that I have and used my brad gun to secure this frame to my wood piece. This next step is totally not necessary. It was bothering me that you could see some of these gaps between the frame and then the scrap wood itself because I did want to paint the sides of this so it was all white to match the front of the frame. So if that doesn't bother you, you wouldn't need to do this step. I just wanted it to look a little bit more seamless since it was very rough, <laughs> we can say. And next is the fun part. So I just cut out this cherry blossom decal using my Cricut and I'm just going to put it down on um, across my little scrap wood art piece here. I think this just gives like the perfect finishing touch to it. It's very simple, minimal, modern. It could be rustic, I guess, too. It could fit into that farmhouse decor for sure. But I wanted to make sure that um, all of the parts of the vinyl were like getting into those cracks so that it looked like it really was like part of this piece of wood 
or a part of these wood scraps, like almost like it was painted on there because if you painted something on there, you're not gonna get it perfect. You're gonna have those, those lines and those gaps. So I used my scraper at first and it worked for the most part, but I did just go back in with my fingernail and just like made sure to press down all of these edges. So it was really like wrapping around all the edges of the wood. And I just love the way this turned out. And here is the finished piece. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I would love to know what you think. And if you would ever try something like this, if you have a bunch of scrap wood just laying around. And here you can see how those vinyl pieces just really wrapped around all of the wood. And I just think it gives such an added detail to this piece. For this next project, I'm taking this wood block cube that I had a scrap of in my garage. It has this groove cut out of it. My husband was playing around with some different cuts that he was working on. I don't know, but this is the piece he was testing it on, so now it's my scrap. But anyways, I am just marking 12 inches down and I'm going to take this carpenter square to make sure I get a nice straight line for where I need to make my cut. And then I also cut down a 10 inch section and an eight inch section and I mark them all the same way. Then I'm just going, going to sand everything nice and smooth out in my garage after I've made my cuts. Now I'm taking this nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree and I did separate the, the nautical rope into three separate strands so that they would be a little thinner because that rope is pretty thick and I'm just going to start hot gluing it all the way around my blocks. So I used one full strand for each block and then I also took another piece of nautical rope. This was the 11 foot nautical rope and then I took another piece of nautical rope that I bought, separated it again, and then used a little bit more on my two larger blocks so that the rope would be a little bit higher on those two. Once I had it, I had about like three rows left, I would say, to wrap. I took my ivory Waverly chalk paint and I started painting the tops of the blocks. Now you certainly could paint the whole block before you added your rope. It didn't bother me that you could see through it a little bit, so I just painted the top half. And then I'm going to finish off wrapping my rope and make sure that it ends in the back of my block and just cut it off. Once I have it cut nice and as close um, to the back as I can, I do just add on another dab of hot glue. And then I'm going to take my little makeup spatula there and press it down so that nothing comes frayed or undone. Once I have that part complete, I wanted to turn these into candle holders. So I drew a circle around where I wanted my candle to sit on all of these blocks. And then I have a spade bit and it looks like it should have fit perfectly if you hold it up to the candle. But long story short, it didn't work out that way. I couldn't get it to fit and this was the largest spade bit I could find. So I ended up having to melt down my candle separate candles and just pour them into the hole that I drilled. But before I can drill my hole, I need to find the center of the circle that I drew on top of my blocks so that I know where to put the point of the spade bit. And I did have to take this out to my garage to drill and I wasn't able to get a good camera angle. So that part, unfortunately, I did not get to film. But once I had my holes drilled, I realized that my candle wasn't going to fit. So I found some floating candles that were left over from my wedding and I just melted them down on my stove. Unfortunately, I also couldn't film the part where I poured it into my blocks because my son started getting really sick and we had to get to the doctor. So I had to hurry up and get that done and I wasn't able to film it. He's okay now, not feeling great, but we're making it through. Next, I took some Waverly antique wax and I'm just going to distress all of the edges on my blocks. 
I do distress the very tops a little bit as well, but I didn't really want to go like across the center too much. But the last little detail I'm going to add here is just some faux leather ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and this is their darker brown color. I'm going to cut it down um, to make sure that it fits all the way around my block and then I'm going to hot glue it in place. So for this smaller, this is the smallest size candle that I made and I did end up hot gluing the sides of the candle, but I didn't want to put any hot glue on the front because this leather ribbon is like really thin and you might be able to see like that bubbled up glue underneath of it. So I didn't want to put anything on the front where it might be visible. But that was it for this one. And you'll be able to see um, the candle, how I had to pour the wax into my drilled out little hole there in a second. But let me know what you guys think. I don't plan on ever actually lighting these. I don't think I would have lit them even if I was able to add the tea lights in. This is purely more just decoration. And up on the shelf that I have them on, you really can't even tell they are candles at all. Next, I'm taking these wood shims that I got. I picked up a few packs and ended up using a little under two, but I'm gonna split them up into four groups of six shims each. And I'm gonna paint them in these four colors, moss, antique wax, ink, and ivory. So once I had all of my shims painted, I had this like wire wreath form that I broke off of uh, one of the larger Dollar Tree wreath forms a few months ago. And I wanted to make this shim wreath and I used the wire wreath form as just like a guide on how I should place them. And I got all of these shims placed around the wreath. It looked like it was gonna work out perfect. I loved the way it was looking, but as soon as I went to glue them all down in place, it wasn't working. Like it would not stay in the shape I needed it to. It, They were like stacking too high on top of each other and I just couldn't figure out how I got it to lay out right, but not glue down right. It was so weird. And I wonder, I didn't use the wreath form to actually glue them to, and maybe that would have helped, but I played with this thing like 500 times and pulled it apart multiple times trying to get it to work. So instead I just took this MDF round that I had that came off of a mirror and I'm just going to use that to glue all of my pieces down to. So I laid out each color and just layered them how I thought they should look. I wanted the green moss color to be the star so that's why I started with that one down first. Um, I did lay these all out and you can see the glue I had all over these. I tried hot glue. I tried uh, wood glue because I needed a little more time to play with them. It was literally a hot mess. But anyways, it turned out okay in the end. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but I still think it looks pretty good. So once I had those all down, um, I did just hot glue these all in place. And then I flipped it over and painted the MDF round with my ivory chalk paint. And you also could paint this before gluing it. I didn't even know if this was gonna work and I didn't wanna waste my time. So I waited until I knew I was gonna get my wood shims down to start painting my round. But then I thought it was looking a little bare and it needed something to finish off that circle. So I grabbed my juke cord and hot glued that all the way around the edge. This jute cord is from Walmart, so it is a little bit thicker than the jute you would get from the Dollar Tree. So once I had that down in place, I just, of course, grabbed my lighter and burned off all of those little fraying bits on the jute. I think this is so satisfying to watch all of those little fuzzies just burn away. So next I'm taking my welcome sign. This was a galvanized word that was from the Dollar Tree. It came in like a pack of three back in the fall 
and I just painted it black with my ink Waverly chalk paint. So this next part, I, I couldn't figure out how I wanted to do. I played around with this so many different times in so many different ways. I started out with like a swag on the top of this wheatgrass. Didn't love it. Didn't like how it was looking. I thought it was taking away from the shims. So then I just kind of made like a little asymmetrical wrap at the bottom. Didn't really love that. Like, I don't know, this was one of the better options, I guess. But still, I, I just wasn't loving it. I really wish I could have had my shim wreath just like be the hero and work out the way I had wanted it to, but that's neither here nor there. So next I grabbed a few other options, played around with, I didn't know what to do. Um, eventually I did end up landing on these blooming branches from the Dollar Tree and I just kind of laid them out in like an asymmetrical pattern and then added a double little jute twine bow. To the bottom. I don't know if this is my favorite option. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but this is what I ended up with and I was so frustrated with this project by the end I just wanted to get it done. And here's a look at how it turned out. I really loved the idea of the shim wreath and like I said I wish it really would have turned out how I initially had it laid out. I'm gonna have to play with that one again. I do have some more packs of shims, so we'll see if I can get it to work in a future video. But I ended up placing this on my front door and I do love it there for the springtime. That's it for today's video guys. Let me know what you think of these three wood craft projects? Wood scrap projects? I don't know. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed those scrap wood projects. Don't forget to comment down below which was your favorite. Subscribe before you leave if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.